12-year-old Sean Couturier was born to play hockey. This Beresford, New Brunswick native is currently a star on the rise at the AAA Pee Wee level. The son of Isabel and former NHLer Sylvain Couturier, Sean has been passionate about hockey for most of his young life. Uh, I've been playing like for eight years. I started at four years old skating in the United States. As captain of the Chaleur Lightning, Sean demonstrates strong leadership, good hockey sense, and has been described as being an all-around player. And where does this future star see himself down the road? I would like to go in the NHL like probably uh, other kids of our age. We salute Sean Couturier, a Rogers television future star. With the general manager of the Philadelphia Flyers, Paul Holmgren, when you got this pick from Columbus yesterday and you were on the trade, can you possibly imagine that Sean Couturier was still going to be there? Uh, you know, no, no, we didn't. Uh, but it, you know, it was a, it was certainly uh, something we thought about that it might be, uh, based on the, you know, how it goes with the rumblings you hear over the course of. Uh, uh, the few weeks leading up to the draft, so uh, we're, we're excited. We're happy to, that we were able to draft Sean uh, with the number eight pick, and we look forward to him coming to training camp. Yeah, I, I think going into into the draft, once I mean, we had, I think we had two days before from the time we made the trades until the draft. So we we had a lot of conversations. We were our focus was probably on uh, two two defensemen that we thought would be there, Sean. Uh, was was high, higher on our list, and, and quite frankly, on Thursday when we made the trades and got the pick, the eighth pick, uh, probably wasn't uh, in any conversation at all. You know, funny thing is, I never really got an interview with with Philadelphia until the night before the draft, which is kind of unusual. Usually, if you get drafted by by a team, but um, yeah, I guess they they didn't have a. They didn't have a first round pick that year until they, they made that big trade and um, after that I, I saw they had a lot of interest in me uh, meeting with them and uh, I really didn't know where I was going to get drafted but uh, I knew they had a lot of interest in me. Kind of quickly scrambled and we sort of heard that Sean might might be dropping for whatever reason. He had mono and didn't have as strong a year as he had the year before. Uh, we, we at least wanted to get some face time with him. So we did have a meeting with him, I believe, on the Friday uh, in the morning of the draft. Uh, Sean was an easy, easy guy because we all liked him. Uh, so at the draft, when, when we were on the clock, it just became more of a, because the other guys were defensemen. And I, I think given, given that we had just traded away two centers, we thought that Sean would have a chance to make our team right away. He was a bigger guy. Uh, well-rounded, two-way guy, and we made the made the pick based on that. After making the team right out of camp, Couturier played a top-nine role all season, only to cap it off with one of the most memorable rookie playoff moments in Flyers history, scoring a hat trick versus the Pittsburgh Penguins. I made myself a name in that series, and uh, it, was, it was it was a nice, it was, it was fun to be part of. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, up. Till this day, I don't know if I lived uh, another series like that. Um, I remember going through the, the regular season rivalry with Pittsburgh, New York. It was, you know, it was, it was pretty nuts. But uh, then you get into the playoff, and it was even crazier. So um, it was just, just a crazy moment and a lot of fun to be part of. And pretty incredible. It's, it's already been uh, seven year and going into my eighth year uh, playing here. Um, I remember like it was yesterday getting drafted and um, you know kind of getting a dream come true and and the start of uh, you know something that you've always uh, dreamed of. After a breakout 2017-2018 season, Couturier is named one of the alternate captains alongside Wayne Simmons and Claude Giroux. You know, he was, he was a great rookie and, you know, he's an even better, um, you know, veteran. I just think it's one of those things that, it, you know, it, it was time. You know, Kutz has been in the organization so long, he showed his stripes. Um, you know, he's earned his stripes and, um, you know, I personally think it's, you know, it's only right for him to be an assistant captain on this team. Yeah, he's actually really funny. I've had the, uh, the pleasure of sitting beside Coots for the last eight years in the practice rink. Um, you know, he, he talks quite a bit. I just think it's, 
he doesn't talk to you guys, maybe. Red <laughs> flag. Harder than it looks, doesn't it? Cut it off. <laughs> but he definitely talks to us. Um, you know, he's very funny. Um, you know, he's the man with a thousand nicknames. I've never seen anyone have more nicknames than him. So, um, you know, it's pretty cool. He's a great guy. He doesn't have a huge ego uh, at all. He's very selfless, and not only in his play, but the way he carries himself. He's a. I think he's. I'm very proud of uh, the, the young man that Sean's become. Every season, the Flyers organization invites all fathers of the players along for a home game and a road trip. This year, Sean's dad, Sylvain, was able to make the trip despite being the GM of a junior team in Quebec. This year was pretty early in the year, so we had to make some, some arrangements pretty quick. But, uh, you know, when uh, as soon as I know the date, I usually uh, get, uh, get in touch with my dad, see if he's available. Uh, he's pretty busy on his side. So it's, uh, it's, we, we, we try to make it work, but uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's tough for some years than others. It's, it's always nice to, to come down here and uh, watch a few games when, uh, when I can. And uh, especially the, the, the dad's trip, there's always something special. Last year uh, it was a Steelers games, and this year it's uh, you know, Red Sox in, in the World Series. So uh, it's always nice to see the dads back uh, year after year. And there's always a new, new dad uh, every year, so it's nice to get to know them. We weren't playing so good. Uh, seems like uh, you know everyone was on their own page, and it was it was it was tough times. With this. Six to one setback. They dropped to four and seven on the year. They've lost three straight and four their last five. They leave the ice disappointed much. Going on that road trip, we could kind of just get away and get away from the distractions, uh, come together and regroup. And I thought we did, uh, you know, a great job on that road trip, getting seven out of eight points. Flyers rookie Nicholas Abe Cubell looked to make an impressive start for his first NHL game versus Anaheim. Abe Cubell with a hit there at the end of that play. He's had a really good debut. And some subtle things. Really well. Yes, he has. He's been a noticeable player. It's great. I love seeing you guys coming and play the first game. Um, you know, it takes me back about eight years ago when I played my first one. Um, you know, you remember kind of the nerves and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it's just fun to be a part of. You see the excitement. Uh, he had his family there, his parents, a couple of buddies came down. Um, it's just, I think when you have a guy like that come in and play their first game, you want to get a win from, uh, you want to play hard. And I think, uh, you know, it was great to see. I think he stepped in and played really well for us. Start to leave. Uh, I'm already excited for the next one. I don't know when it's going to be, but uh, I'm also happy that my friends and family are here tonight. I saw them after the game; it was super, super nice. They were so proud. Uh, the whole, like, as soon as I know, they knew I was playing. Uh, they were so excited. Like, the, they had a group chat. There were like so many not notifications, talking. So excited. Uh, they made a whole like trip out of it, coming here, and I'm happy to see them. Uh, probably going to see them tomorrow uh, if I can, if I can eat with them and stuff. But, uh, yeah, it's really nice. Talk about it. I think a lot of guys have big games. G, you were too great out there. Sydney was trying to talk about Moose. Uh, ah. You know, we let this guy two times. That's a big game for you. But I got to give it to my boy, Dale Weiss. Oh, 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 oh yeah. yeah. You can't hear anything when you put the helmet on. Uh, so I never understood when a guy was giving a speech when he puts the helmet on why, I, you know, I don't really hear what they're saying half the time because I don't think they can hear it. So uh, I finally realized that when I put it on, you can't really hear stuff. 
Yeah, it's, I, I think it's funny. Um, I, I think it's every team kind of has their own thing. Um, I think ours is, is one of the best I've seen. Uh, um, and then you see the post game pictures that start going on Twitter and, and everywhere. And um, I think the one of Goody was pretty funny. He had the shirt off, uh, the helmet on. That one kind of went, went viral everywhere. I loved it. I thought that was funny. So it's just another good team bonding thing. Um, like I said, you, you kind of got an opportunity as a guy that, that had the helmet to give it to someone that I thought uh, deserved it and someone that, you know, doesn't always get recognized. And I think, uh, you know, obviously Patty giving it to me the game before was kind of the similar thing. You know, guys love being around him. You know, he's he's a vocal guy. He likes to likes to have fun with the boys, and you know, make sure the the locker room stays loose. And he's been around for for quite a bit now, so he's uh, he's one of those veterans that's been uh, been through a lot. Uh, you know, he it was probably tough for him not not starting the year in the lineup and to show the way that he's uh, he's responded when given the opportunity. It just shows. Uh, the type of player he is, the type of guy he is, and uh, you know we uh, everyone appreciates him. Following a huge win in Anaheim, the Flyers went on a tear, grabbing seven of a possible eight points on the Western Conference road trip. Fake it in, but it wouldn't go. Lindblom's got it again. Centers it, the shot, they score! Simmons able to beat Jack Campbell, and the Flyers again respond quickly. They did it late in the game in Anaheim, and they respond quickly. advantage of a mistake by the Coyotes and they bury it. Come together and regroup and I thought we did uh, you know a great job on that road trip getting seven out of eight points. Um, we got ourselves back in, you know, in the, the playoff hunt and higher in the standings. And but at the same time, we can't be too satisfied with that. And we got to keep keep pushing, building on that road trip, and and uh, keep climbing in the standings.